The day is finally here, the moment we have all been waiting for as Nintendo fans is upon us. Yes, indeed, we can expect that long-rumored September Nintendo Direct to take place tomorrow at the time of filming this video on September 13th at 7 a.m. Pacific Time. That is an early one for you on the West Coast. 10 a.m. Eastern Time or 9 a.m. if you are where I am at in Central Time Zone. And you can see the following posted up from Nintendo of America's Twitter where it says tune in at 7 a.m. PT tomorrow 9.13 for a Nintendo Direct live stream featuring roughly 40 minutes of information focused on Nintendo Switch games launching this winter. Watch it here. Now leading up to this announcement, we had various names, some tend to put stock into, others tend to not actually get this entirely right. Nate the Hate, or Nate Drake, going out of his way to say that yes indeed, Monday would be the announcement, Tuesday would be the direct, even Emily Rogers chiming in saying that yes, she's heard a direct will take place on Tuesday, it will be a morning position direct, this is all prior to Nintendo's exact official announcement, so you have to keep in mind, these are the same people, some of which, and including Jeff grub that are saying that games should be here like metroid prime hd remaster like wind waker and twilight princess hd and we will dive more into those games and the likelihood of seeing them at this event in just a couple moments but it is notable to me that the insiders that have some of this information gaming journalists real people with a real face behind their name were claiming this would happen and it is now confirmed to be happening and now we have to pivot the conversation to the announcements that they have rumored up to this point in time will we see them there and that is where a lot of the hype and anticipation kicks in for nintendo fans because while nintendo has absolutely had a fantastic 2022 so far i think with the slide of games like breath of the wild 2 being moved to spring 2023 that you do have to realize that bayonetta 3 and the two pokemon games being scarlet and violet are around the corner for what we can look out for the rest of this year but outside of that there is still a lot to be desired and i think that this is the time and the window that Nintendo finally pulls back the curtain on some of these long rumored projects. And I think that one absolute safe bet to put your expectations on for tomorrow's event is the long rumored Metroid Prime HD remaster. It will be the 20th anniversary for this game in November, and it will make a ton of sense for Nintendo to revitalize the Metroid Prime brand and name with this announcement and the confirmation that this game will be out most likely in November to celebrate the 20th anniversary and kind of have a justification on why this one is getting ported standalone and why it's getting the big boy remaster treatment with HD visuals and probably touched up textures and gameplay revisions as well, as opposed to we may see the other Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption make it over later and how that actually ultimately happens will be interesting to watch unfold, but we at least know that this Prime 1 port is in the works and it's going to get all the hype and anticipation built back up around Metroid Prime 4 as fans haven't had anything to look at other than that startup logo splash screen that we saw revealed back in 2017. Now, yes, clearly there were development problems with that game and it ultimately had to be scrapped and restarted in 2019, but we are now approaching the end of 2022, so it's still quite some time since we've heard anything. If we are extremely lucky at this event, the Prime 1 HD remaster may be followed up with something like a gameplay glimpse or at least a overview of the world. Maybe we get to see what the graphical engine actually looks like or it very well could be the HD remaster announcement for Prime 1 and then just an acknowledgement that Metroid Prime 4 development is continuing and that it is proceeding smoothly from here and Metroid Prime fans here is your holdover game which is not even a holdover for me I cannot wait to replay Metroid Prime 1 HD remastered I've been purposely holding out on even touching the game whatsoever in any way shape or form outside of like occasional videos where I'll boot up the beginning portion of the game I have been waiting for this moment to repurchase this play it on the nintendo switch it has been so many years now that it'll be a brand new experience for me all over again and i definitely have this one high up on the list of games we can expect now tying it into some of the people that were talking about this event saying that they have heard things about games that will be there and saying that it will be at a time frame like this jeff grubb and mike minotti on their podcast are claiming that they have heard that the wind waker hd and twilight princess hd will be at this direct presentation which is a huge deal for zelda fans and it also feels like tying it into the tweet from nintendo games focus mostly on the winter time 
time frame, keep that in mind that we may be expecting these Zelda ports and the big focus on that at this event as opposed to the Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 blowout because it does sound like maybe, unless if it's their show closer, which it very well could be for that spring 2023 game, the deep dive for Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 very well may be at something like the February Nintendo Direct and in turn, until then, Nintendo sticking to their goal of releasing one new Zelda game per calendar year, specifically in the Switch's life cycle, may continue to be a staple that we see going forward. And you have to keep in mind that knowledge of these games being a project and being brought over to the Switch have been talked about for well over the last year and a half, almost two years at this point, when it was thought that these would be marketed alongside of Zelda's 35th anniversary. And I do tend to believe that these are very real projects. The question, was always going to be when does Nintendo decide to release them and finally port them to the Switch and the scenario that was put out by the same people claiming to have knowledge of the products existing was that if they needed more time for Breath of the Wild 2's development that is when Nintendo would pull back the curtain on them. Now a lot of fans including myself assumed that that would take place over something like a June or E3 style Nintendo Direct which apparently Nintendo just doesn't stick to if E3 is not taking place and we did not see E3 happen this year so this would be the event when you reveal them and it very well could be a very short turnaround time from when these are announced to when they are released. I am thinking Mario 35th anniversary style where we got that Mario Direct in September and then saw the 3D All-Stars collection launch the same month. Are we getting the Zelda games this month? Maybe not quite that soon, early to mid-October. Absolutely a complete possibility and something that you wanna put these games out as fast as possible because if we are talking late March or early April for Breath of the Wild 2, these are obviously games that need to breathe alongside of each other and I don't think that it's too much Zelda in too little of an amount of time because Breath of the Wild 2 is its own brand new open world experience style Zelda and these classic 3D Zeldas follow more of that linear progression of course but have such a special place in so many fans hearts not to mention the fact that the Switch is now more successful than just about any other Nintendo home console for sure at this point and even up there with some of their highest performing handheld numbers of all time and of course that has created an entirely new generation of Zelda fans specifically with Breath Breath of the Wild that would like to probably go back and experience these GameCube classics that were already remastered and up and just simply need to be ported to the Switch and it is an easy project and it will print money for Nintendo. There is no reason not to do it and this very well could finally be the event it takes place. The big question still remains around this project on whether or not it is a two for one port, meaning we get both on the same cartridge for 60 bucks, which will be extremely consumer friendly and everybody would be more than happy for that. Maybe Nintendo does something interesting and they try to charge 70 or 80 for this still a consumer friendly move and something i think people would be happy with or we have to have that reality check that sometimes nintendo likes to just slide in fully completed wii u games at that 60 dollars price point and even though we've seen them released at 50 dollars on the wii u we very well could be looking at a price tag combined of 120 being 60 and 60 as individual releases because these games were already ported over to the Wii U and they need minimal effort to bring them over, unlike Skyward Sword HD, I am hopeful that we see these launch as a combo pack, but obviously me, whether you like it or not, I will be part of the problem if they do release it as standalone ports because I will still buy both. Now from there, we have games like F-Zero GX that I think are very likely to be featured at the event as well. Will we see more GameCube remasters outside of that? Very possibly, but it also might not be until further into the year. You have the heavily rumored Fire Emblem game that could likely be at this event, and the big section that I will be watching very intently and very closely is what are we going to get when it comes to Nintendo Switch Online? There are two directions it could go in my opinion. We could either be looking at something like a brand new family of systems, which I will be most hyped for being the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Original systems, hopefully with GB and GBC thrown onto the base tier of NSO, and Game Boy Advance being featured as part of the expansion pack, and Nintendo starts throwing out multiple titles per month for those systems, that would be fantastic to live alongside of all of the continued updates we have between Genesis, NES, SNES, and N64 games. 
and we do absolutely know that the emulators are not only leaked online but actually according to people in the know are completely finished and ready to go and this is the thing you have to remember about nintendo is they will finish projects and sit on them unlike other companies being sony and microsoft trying to rush to put out games as fast as humanly possible and try to always kind of stay on that train of once the game is out ship it once this technology is good let's have it ready to go nintendo sometimes just sits on things so is this the time that we see those family of systems brought in or could it be something that they feel like it's not quite the right time yet and even though the technology is done and ready they make us wait something like an additional year to get the reveal for these consoles and we actually just get an updated roadmap for n64 titles maybe kicking it off with a huge hype one something like goldeneye i think that would get many new subscribers in addition to people set for renewals because nintendo likes to come out with heavy hitters around this nso renewal time and that's why they always feature a big section of the direct at september historically because that's when they launched the service originally and they want to make sure that people that are coming up on that annual date have a reason to pay and say stay subscribed or subscribe for the first time and i think a game like goldeneye being at the front and head of the new roadmap for n64 games could absolutely deliver that now because it being complicated with microsoft and nintendo being involved in this project will nintendo get the rights for goldeneye and launch it and throw it on the service possibly also possibly not my expectations it's a coin toss on what they're going to do with nso in my opinion but i do think that in a big way nso will be there in some way shape or form so clearly there are a ton of hype and expectations as we walk into tomorrow's direct i am mobile today you may notice i'm not on camera i am actually filming this in a car however tomorrow i will be back in studio back in office in front of the camera and i will be live streaming this event tomorrow morning 9 a.m central time that's where i am at that's 7 a.m pacific time and 10 a.m eastern time so if you're watching this video and you're feeling the hype you're feeling the energy make sure you come by and say hi in the live stream on this channel tomorrow morning we will be going live just a little bit before the event probably around 15 minutes early something like that make sure everything's working correctly talk back and forth with you guys and maybe this is finally the event Event that if you've been around on the channel for a while you will know how much I want to see Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD make it over that will definitely be the biggest announcement for me right close to the Metroid Prime remaster because that's another huge one so I'm super pumped for this event I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video all your personal thoughts and speculation around what you think we'll see featured at this direct do you think that many of these projects that we are talking about will indeed come to fruition do you have your expectations maybe lower that we won't see a whole lot of the stuff that's been rumored and maybe these games are down the line and we get more updates on existing games and bonus question i really want to hear from you on whether or not you think this is a breath of the wild 2 focused event and that is the show closer or if they just forego and focusing on breath of the wild 2 at all and it is primarily built around the hd remasters for the gamecube with some kind of acknowledgement that development's proceeding smoothly and we'll hear more about breath of the wild 2 in the future so regardless of your thoughts and feelings and everything we talked about today i do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic. Go watch the weekend video next if you haven't already where we boot up Splatoon 3 for my first time together and I share my very early gameplay impressions as somebody who is quite honestly new to the series and make a recommendation on who this game might be for. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video.